Okay, the, the shout out goes to and then 0170 on YouTube. Sent me the link to this. Um, this is not this vessel. They believe this is the vessel. This is actually the vessel. Um, uh, this is um, a different vehicle. Vessel. It's not the same one. Um, but let's look at it. Today is a critical adjoining. So it's, it's interesting, you know, just looking at it, what part is carbon fiber and what parts uh, a seal or a gasket or something. This is the really looking down the inside of it, and they're going to bring this over. Let's just bring this over. That's the titanium and the carbon fiber. So here's the titanium ring. We try to scale it as big as that guy's chest from his nose to his belly. So, you know, it's a good 10 inches deep. And, and there's some balls, right? Now, this version is not wrapped like the other. This is a glued version. This is a different vessel. But uh, this, I'm going to take this time to just talk to you. Here's the tube. Let's say that's the tube. And here's this ring. But here's, and the ring has a door put to it. You can put the door like that, all right? And on the back side, you can, you can close it up however you like. You know, put another one of these titanium rings on and glass door or, or, or make it solid. It's glued, and you're saying, oh my gosh, it's glued. Well, realize the pressure is everywhere. So if it's everywhere, it helps keep the seal, all right? Depending on how you do your seal, that pressure maintains the seal. Equal pressure does. You're not exceeding the pressure outside, so that pressure outside in the water is greater than pressure inside. So you just need the bolts temporarily to keep you good while you're lowering it Things like that, so the you know the door doesn't fall off; it stays in place until the pressure is actually what's maintaining it to the to the um, tube you're in. But at some point, this door is so heavy that it's not just the pressure that's make, make, keeping it uh, pressed to your tube; it's the bolt connection, or it's however the door is sealed. You know, interlocking a uh, hinged. Um, etc that that's how, what keeps it together until your pressure is so great that this that you couldn't slide this section down if you wanted to that this door weighs a thousand pounds but the pressure outside is way greater than a thousand pounds and it is that's it's a thousand pounds per square inch it can't move because the pressure against it going up here too it puts out the door's only a thousand pounds it's it's it can't displace. It only weighs a thousand, and it's got you know tens of thousands of pounds of pressure underneath of it. So it can't slide from there. And so your bolts keep it in place. Your bolts keep it in place until you run into that pressure that that automatically locks the doors in, if you will. That it's so it, it's like it's like trying to open your door and there's a big wind. You can't do it. It's too much pressure out there. You're like, what the hell? Can't open the door. Too much of a wind. Well, well same thing here. That, that it would be so much pressure outside that it will seal it at the at the at your door, your opening. The pressure outside is greater. But if you can crack it, you can get air to come in. It equalizes, and then you can whoo. The door swings open. All right, and looking for my cats. So this goes to another vessel, and and if they have a seal here. And he is advancement. That department. seal needs to be uniform. And All right, there it is behind. It looks like it's already in place. All right, so that looks like the lip that goes on it, and then it's a a, re, a recess, so like that, and then another lip. So let's do this, and then your carbon fiber is is here, and the glue they're mentioning. They're literally gonna glue all this in here um, to make it bond and that glue would be equivalent to well our, our bolts and now they talk about expansion and contraction uh, in here and which we will we'll mention we'll talk about here it's all theoretical because it hasn't gone down yet it's and small but not too small level small. do a good cleaning check the surface out mm -hmm. check measurements between the two components, um, really what's holding them together. As we look at the carb, this is the carbon fiber. This is that wrapped fiber like we saw a moment ago. 
exterior, you can see the the bands. So they're kind of stepped, you know, overlapping. So maybe the band is that wide, and then they overlap it by 50%. It's not quite threaded. It's not like a, a lot of lines. It, it looks significantly spaced, like, I don't know, I'm looking at his hand, the palm of his hand, here to here, maybe 4 inch, and maybe that's 4 inch, so 8 inches, 8 inch bands going up. Or is it 4 inches and they're only overlapping? Uh, is it six inches on overlapping too? I can't, I can't tell. And then we have some what appears to be what abrasions, and then they're the carbon fiber. They they are elongating it. You know, is this carbon fiber designed to be stretched? How much tension is on the carbon fiber? And once you put your glue on it, does it retract? I use fiber cement a lot. Fiber cement. I did not say fiber concrete. Fiber cement. And the fiber cement, the trick is, is that it's wet. And when it dries, those little microfibers, three-quarter inch, let's say, it starts drying. It shrinks back. It pulls on these little fiberglass members. And I believe those fiberglass members go into tension. And now you have post-tension cement. I tested this on many walls that I tried to knock over. Um, I was able to knock over one with my vehicle once um, and fracture it. And it was abrupt. It was, I mean, I could kick at it, do all these things and nothing. I had people kick at it. But backing a vehicle into it, it fractured. So it had its, its it resisted obviously to some degree. And then when it let go, it, it fractured like like a... Like you would break a plastic fork back in the day. Now they bend so much. But like you would break that, it's fractured. All right? It was brittle. It makes me wonder how brittle this system is on their, how much tension they put on it, how consistent it was. Um, as the roll gets out here initially, it's a tight roll. And as they work their way out, it's is it shorter or longer, these fibers, the spacing of them? Are the fibers closer together inside? Did they did they check that in the carbon fibers? How much stress? How critical was that stress between the fibers? And I say the outer one, then the next row line in. How critical was that 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 that, uh, that variance that um, gradation from here being a tight where the people are are inside the craft? And working their way out to the outside, say that's a six inch thick fiber, um, carbon fiber. How critical was that? How much, if at all, did they investigate the spacing, the stretching of it? Or did they just keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping? Clearly, none of these guys are over 50 years old, and therein lies the problem lack of, uh, you, you can't learn from yourself. If uh, if you don't have any experience in this, and I'm I'm trying to have a play on his on him hating fifty white year old white men, and yet he wires, hires white people, but they don't know. As soon as they turn fifty, they're 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 no good. They're racist. They're useless. So I don't know how old they are, but they're on the clock in this company's timeline. And the owner was forty nine when he started it. As I did the time at the rough rough to mid time, and so he hated the next year for some reason. I actually hated pilots. All right. And I saw his pilots. It's uh, interesting. It was amateur hour. It was quite scary if you were to be going on there. And we're going to go down that route thanks to this person that shared this link. So it's, it's got data in it. All right. So we got the young guy doing something with, uh, I don't know, was that a, a pencil? And then it's posing for a photograph. And he's looking at him like... Uh, Hey, we're going to go out tonight or what? Card height, card heart shirt. But there's no redundancy checks here, but let's go. Now, I'm just, I don't know. And allowing them to move together is the glue. And so you want nice, even uh, movement. It's the glue that's holding the family together, and we want to make sure it's right. Okay, he's the director of engineering at Gosha Gate. He says the glue that's holding the family together, and I talk about that marriage, right? And he said, you want to make sure they're right. And he has a little laugh. Oh, 
Has this glue been tested under cycling and salt water? The glue is being set up in not in, not in those conditions apparently, but um, let's listen to him state his statement again. So there's the one of the 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 entrance and maybe the back door is sealed lid. Incidentally, when I talk about the uh, in my other videos where I talk about that they're gonna put the eyeball in there, maybe uh, what I'm implying is that that's the back door. It is the back door, I think, but the front door would just have the same as the back door. But with an eyeball cut into it, the the lens. Um, so it, di it didn't matter to me on that. But here we go. But I don't think it was hinged. Nice, even uh, movement. It's the glue holding the family together, and we want to make sure it's right. Ceramic, ceramic, black ceramic. It's pretty simple, but if we mess it up, there's not. So he's wiping it down, but with his left hand, he has his, his oily hands with his left hands on the... Uh, on on what he's trying to clean, I don't know. That's just you know bad staging. Up top, we got two guys in in a uh, bakery wear costumes. They don't want to get their clothes messed up, so they got on their uh, gloves and glue, standing on ladders, leaning over. This is where quality control and f issues come in. Um, the ladder he's leaning over can clearly kick out on him, okay, and get it. So how much focus and quality can you do? If your brain is worried about him, I just go take a toss. And same thing with this guy. So you think they would have some proper scaffolding uh, to work around? This looks like a proper scaffolding. It even has a fall protection, so you can't open it back up. With that said, I'm looking at two ladders laid up there, and nobody's holding the ladder. So whatever they're doing, the quality's going down. The guy down here rubbing this. Maybe he's making three wishes, you know, from a genie. It's pretty simple, but if we mess it up, there's not a lot of recovery. Okay, so that was just indicators, etc. It looks like that, the lip that would take it. All right, that's your bond. But remember, the pressure, once you meet that pressure, it's a wash. It's connected. But with that said... That steel down here and that steel here, and you got, I think of it as a column now, as a column, or the, or tube column, you've got a crush. Um, you've got, say, 10,000, let's just do 100 again. Now, I'll do 1,000 PSI, and you guys, you know it's way more than that. 1,000 PSI and 1,000 PSI on each end, acting on the middle of this, this thing in the background. All right, so it's trying to crush it to push it out. And here, it's trying to crush it in. So at some point, this this rim might be rigid right here. But at some point, it's think of it as a critical shear zone. There's some tapering off in here where this is not more fat. I'm going to say that. This is not more fat here and then tapered off here to resolve the buckling issue as think of it as adding more steel, the column length. And so they, is it, is it, is the, is the width of this equal all the way down here? Did they think of that? that you know what? Let's go ahead and uh, for buckling, let's make the whole thing the same width to resolve it. We're going to just do that. And then when we have the pressure coming in from here, the plate, and just think of it as a plate, two, uh, two hydraulic plates trying to crush each other, crush this tube, that it won't buckle. It won't buckle here, okay, because we covered that. And the deflection-wise, the thing of the Euler buckler form, but a little different deflection because now we got pressure coming on the side, but every single location on the side um, that trying to push it in, equally push it in because it's a tube. So it's equally pressuring around there. At some point, your, your, your radius, your circle, is wrong. Let's say that this is a 10-foot. It, it's just added for, you, for, your, for your thickness of your walls is wrong. You, you, you only get, for that buckling thing, your walls can be, say, let's just say 6 inches. All right, this covers the buckling. You can't now make the walls 11 feet 
and still use six inches. You've got to change it. You can't change the length of this longer because you want to make it longer without changing the wall thickness. And then you've got to think, because you, you, you don't want any deflection here. You don't want deflection because what's not going to happen is this um, lid here is not going to flex. It's not going to uh, flex. So if you get deflection here in this tube and this buckles down, let's say, well, this lid won't go with it. It's not going to rotate in here and um, to, to account for that. It's not going to flex. These steel ends are not going to flex. So you cannot have deflection in your tube. Your tube has to be stable as steel. All right, you can't have any deflection. They won't, they'll, they'll just be breaking. He says the flexibility will be there in the glue. So the glue is very thin. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's equivalent to a film. So you cannot have deflection in this tube if your lid is also solid. If you've got a flexible lid, yeah, that works great. You know, rubber gaskets that can take all that force. Hey, that works great also, but um, I don't think so. The glue is very thick, so it's not like it's Elmer's good. glue. It's like... Uh... So in the background, again, so this is your... this In the background, this is your tube that's going to have the pressure everywhere, but the middle is the worst part. This is where it would buckle, and so this is why, again... Your, your wall thickness all the way around matters. You cannot have deflection because deflecting this, okay, I'm going to back it away. Deflecting that deforms the tube and breaks the bond. And once that happens, you get your catastrophic, catastrophic failure. You're crushing. Let's be clear. This is not a leak. A leak would fill in and equalize on both sides and it will be no implosion. If it was a leak, water comes in, shooting at high pressure through the, let's see what leak here, fills the tube up, like uh, the movie, whatever movie you can think of, fills this up, the pressure inside is equal to outside, the people drown inside, and this is still in place with no implosion. Drown people are inside, that would be a leak where, where it can just blast in, it would be high pressure shooting in, filling the tube. All right, but this is this is not a leak. This is an implosion where this this structure fractured fully. Now the uh, just crushed. Now he states how proud they are of this uh, this this technology TMC or TM CCM whatever it is. It's uh it's multiple places and it uses sound to determine uh, audio to determine if the if this is failing or overpressured. But they play music on their trips down. I mean, how is it going to know the difference, the vibration? All right. In the background, you see a much better ladder. There's the other ladder. Let's go. So this is a different vessel, and they're gluing it. As you can see, he's using a, uh, like you would use for um, auto body, that plastic putty knife. Um, and on top, he has a trowel oops a trowel you see it right there uh, they want to put the pressure on it's going to flatten out um, the glue I don't know what the set time is or how this works I don't know the glue but um, not not too uh, not too happy about whatever the hell that is you figure anything let's look at this um, maybe it's just me, but does this look like the same color of the glue and then it's not over here? Am I, uh, am I, am I wrong on that? Oh, and they're using an old white guy to determine if, uh, they're doing it correctly. And the guy is working off the ladder. He's on the, he's on basically the, the, the one you don't go on. And he's holding it up here. This is, I mean, somebody said something about, it's like a Lauren Hardy type by outfit. You know, the way they're doing this. They've got a stand with a jack on it that pumps up that mechanics use to change oil in a car. I mean, they don't even, and this is a lot of money, I figure. 
And they can't they don't even have that. They also have a ladder and this little paint tray. Oh, is that not a, that's a baking tray? What the hell? Anyway, you know, you get what you pay for. You hired a guy down the corner to do this, and this is the university, I think, or something. I don't know. But you hired a guy down the corner to, to, to do it, and you get the guy down the corner's work. But, you know, on Fridays, that's what he does. On Saturdays, he's, he's, he's a doctor, and on Fridays, he's a mechanic. I'm, I'm being facetious. For 30, well, that's sense. pretty low, huh? Okay. Now, he's on the second step down, and he's looking, using eyeball. But in the background to the right, we have the ring. All right, the ring there. And maybe this guy is putting it on the sidewalls. All right, that's going inside the ring now, I think. I think this is the, the, the stainless steel, uh, titanium ring, maybe. Maybe stainless steel. This is a little different one. And he's he's getting bluish there and bluish there-ish because I don't know what the hell it is. Wait, no return. Yeah. Good already north south and east to west. Okay, they're going to put it on the top of there, bring it over. All right, it's saying they're good. They're trying to determine if they're going to square up with this thing proper without chipping it up, maybe. Um, okay. Oh yes, so that will be the pressure vessel for Cyclops 2. It'll go to 4,000 meters. Too. It'll be the deepest dive. He said 4,000 feet, I think. I don't know. I think that's what he said. So that looks like, you know, whatever measurements they're doing, looks like they nailed it, you know, as far as measurements go. Now, as far as the glue stick from top to bottom there, well, they when they level it off the top, they use indicators and indicators on there, and assumption is, that they have a 100% a bond. With that said, lift it back up. Take a look. Maybe it caused a bond break, but look it up and check your coverage. Or if it's not that critical, let it ride. Okay, but because remember, you just can't have deflection here. All right? There's with the engagement of this ring and the vessel, the, the, the uh, life vessel, the part you're in, it's just that little fucking lip right there and the glue holding it together, and then the pressure holding it together, compressing it together. So you can't have the flexion here, or water comes by, and maybe you just you're you 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 you're shit. So unless they plan on doing more with this transition, some more carbon fiber, for example, wrapping and tying it in out to here, scotch tape, whatever. Then all is tying these two together is that little recessed lip, and that would glue. And the glue behavior under temperature and banging of the doors and being in the heat. You know, this being heated up, cooled down. This being heated up and cooled down at different different ratios. How will it perform? That seems to be the gasket also, incidentally, that glue. Being carbon fiber sub ever built. When it goes to 4,000 meters, it'll be the only one out there. I'm going to be the first guy in the sub. So. Okay, he said 4,000 meters. Yeah, he said 4,000 meters. All right, so he wants to take this way down. So it's, uh, it's just cylindri cylindrical, very narrow in, the, uh, in there. Uh, you know, he looks like he's got his hands across the top of it. You know, you're talking walls very thin, six inches. It's, he was a believer in carbon fiber, that's for sure. He would be great to sell uh, for bridge repairs, but that's about it. We will see. Okay, let's go to the one where the, where the younger people, which is his model, right? Younger people are the shit and all the people are trash. So this says Christening, Christening Welcome. Titan. It's, uh, we're here in, for now, sunny Port of Everett, Washington, with Cyclops, what was Cyclops 2, Titan, the latest uh, submersible that uh, Ocean Gate has developed. I um, want to uh, welcome the entire team. We have uh, hiding out here on the... Uh, on the dock um and thank everybody it's been an amazing effort we've been at this 
company for nine years, this project for over four, and uh, coming to fruition um, as, we, as we stand here. Um, I also want to thank all our shareholders um, who have been uh, amazing supporters of this project with whom we couldn't do it. And then, a bit, most importantly, our partners. We have uh, with us today IX Blue and 2G Robotics. I want you to notice that you see the height of it. It's only from his uh, bottom of his ass to the top of his head for that scale. Um, who are supplying amazing inertial navigation systems and laser scanning equipment. We've had great support from Teledyne Marine, Deep Sea Power and Light. I'm going to pause uh, Subsea. Uh well, luck would have it. I'm already putting it back on. It is a five-inch thick walled system. Listen. What the hell? All I had to do was wait. Listen. Inertial navigation systems and laser scanning equipment. We've had oh, yeah. great support from Teledyne Marine, Deep Sea Power and Light, uh, Subsea, uh, uh, innovations, I think it is, and uh, as well as um, uh, Spencer Composites, who made the five inch thick carbon fiber pressure vessel, the largest pressure vessel ever made for human occupancy, uh, possibly the largest pressure vessel ever made of that thickness. Let's go back. What's the name of the company? Oops. Composites, who made the, and uh, as well as. Um, uh, Spencer Composites, who made the five-inch thick carbon fiber pressure vessel, the largest pressure vessel ever made for human occupancy. Well, it just looks like uh, another person just got found in a lawsuit by somebody. Spencer whatever, whatever he said. Uh, possibly the largest pressure vessel ever made of that thickness. Um, we have uh, also, we're standing on this wonderful launch platform. It was uh, built, designed by us, and built by Everest Marine here in Washington State. It's been an amazing launch platform, allows us to launch in, in amazing sea states that no one else could handle. Uh, with me, I have Tony Neeson, our Director of Engineering. This has been an amazing engineering feat. Uh, we had some great early support from the Applied Physics Lab, but taking all of that engineering in-house, developing, hiring, uh, and, uh, and working with a, an amazing team of uh, some older and some younger engineers, we have... Uh, oh, that's crazy. He worked with older engineers? Oh, he should be ashamed of himself. But here it is. Uh, he's got to mention that age thing, doesn't he? Older and younger engineers. Oh. Some incredible electronics inside of the sub. We have uh, the world's only acoustic monitoring and strain gauge monitoring system on a... There it is. That's it. It's the acoustic monitoring system. World's only. And submersible. 27 strain gauges, 9 acoustic gauges. We know more about what's happening in this hull than anyone has ever known. So a strain gauge, guys. Obviously, they didn't know that it was about to crush. All right, now they're the acoustic gauges. Um, this will be uh, one of the great moments of submersibles in that this technology is what we need to explore the ocean depth. We're going to go to 4,000 meters after our testing uh, in the Bahamas, assuming all things uh, pan out as we expect and we validate our engineering. Uh, and that will open up 50% of the planet. Uh, Cyclops 3... Uh, which is in development, will go to 6,000 meters, and that will open up 98% of the planet. It's our belief that without uh, innovative technologies and innovative business plans, where we are having individuals help us by uh, supporting... Let me be clear. I got to do... The, I have to do, uh, for fair use, I have to do my own narration. He doesn't know. I have to do a narration, you know, so... Um, he doesn't know about these, this failure that's yet to happen. I will say that... You know, it was innovative, but why push the limits on on the carbon fiber? And why push the limits on the acoustical systems? And there's the cheap bag of uh, whiskey. They're going to break on it, maybe. Um, they're, they're just, the stakeholders were a lot of people sending money in, and... Uh, they they just risk takers and they're they willing to put their money in you know, like a what's that thing they used to do like a GoFundMe or something whatever they did. Our Titanic mm -hmm. survey expedition and the Titanic. research that's going to be done there. Without that, we won't get the kind of exploration we need in the ocean. And that the days of government funding um, are are gone. It really needs to be a private enterprise, just as exploration was at the turn of the last century. Where interesting. So he's make uh, that makes sense too, except for they already mapped the damn thing. So he's mapping it again. Uh, people with means make the exploration possible, and with our virtual and our people with means, the billionaires.
artificial reality component, we're going to be able to make that accessible to everyone on the planet so we can all see the ocean wonders uh, firsthand. So to Tony, would you do the honors and I'm going to back press in the Ab Absolutely. Thank you, Stockton. What is he going to hear? And, uh, and with this, I think Kristen Titan. That thickness. Um, carbon fiber pressure vessel, the largest pressure vessel ever made for human uh, uh, innovations, I think it is, and uh, as well as um, uh, subsea uh, uh, innovations, I think it is, and uh, as well as. Um, uh, Spencer Composites, who made the five Sensor Composites, is that it? Inch thick carbon fiber pressure vessel, the largest pressure vessel ever made for human occupants. Uh, possibly the largest pressure vessel ever made of that thickness. Um, we have uh, also, we're standing on this wonderful launch platform vessel, the largest pressure vessel innovations, I think it is, and uh, as well as... Um, uh, Spencer Composites, who made the five-inch thick carbon fiber pressure vessel. The All right, did you say Sensor Composites? You guys can go to the video and tell me. And here's the title of it. Sensor Composites, and now let me get you something else. Okay, this is the time-lapse of uh, Titan. Sensor Composites, guys. Somebody, somebody give me the link on that, please. I think he said this. Am I wrong? Sensor Composites. Okay, let's look at this. We, this is a time-lapse, so... That's one of the thruster locations. Ah, sorry about that. Thruster location, thruster location. Weight's already on. Weird. Um, there's the door, and the dome is covered with blue. So, um, and there's that. So, I we can go back and look to see if that was the back end of it going on that time or not. It looks like here, this might be fiberglass panels. Um, and they have this this uh, um, feedback system um, uh, that they have, and there are some strain gauges and audio systems, audio gauges on there, carbon. I don't know where they are, but they're on there. Remember, this blew off. This was found one time, and um, and this was found at another location. Uh, so the implosion is like this. It crushes it. I believe in the in the mid span, this uh, force is so great that it it blows this off before um, this deflects down. This deflects down, pulling away from the glued or wrapped um, carbon around that section there, separating the ring. Someone got a little pissy with me in the comments saying it doesn't matter about the bolts. Hey, look, it doesn't matter to you about the bolts. To me, all details matter. To you, it doesn't. So, um, you should go to another channel because uh, I can't tolerate people that miss the details or don't pay attention, that don't think details matter. So, that's a very critical detail that these two separated. They didn't go together, which would indicate, if they went together, would indicate that just, that this failed, pressure vessel was here failed. But the... Um, and it failed at the ring pulling here, and these stay together. But no, the failure and the overpressure were so great that it ejected this like a torpedo, and then crushing this uh, away from the ring that the guy said he found further down. So it's one, two, and then I understand this part of the craft was found. All right, another, another section. So that's... Uh, one, two, uh, five, five pieces. So the rear and the other part, he stated, the rear and the, and the other ring was found together. So that's separated from that part along with his rear. But that makes sense because it has that steel back here, steel caging back there. It possibly connected to that ring. So they might have gone together like that. So that's, that's uh, you mentioned five pieces. So one, two... Um, three and four, and then I know people mentioned this, but we're talking about, you think he's talking about that when the failure happens. And so this would be uh, five, this zone here. All right, they got a time lapse. Let's go ahead and see what we see what we can see. Okay, um, 
Uh, just, just, you know, wiring, whatever. I want to see them. Okay, they put the shell on the back. Shell's off the back. All right, what's the guy doing up there? Well, when you see two heads together, they're trying to figure out something. Okay. Um... Oh, is that him again? The uh, owner? He was right there. He was there. On, he, was, he was there with it. It's only 20 seconds long. I'm just trying to capture whatever I can capture. Oh, this just wiring. It's not actually putting the... Um, and that's just a shell, so I don't think much of much of learning there and this is interesting when they open the door um they have to use this to unscrew uh, there's a screw here um screw damn if it doesn't look like a cable now damn if that doesn't look like a cable i seen him open the door in another video and the guy had a really young boy Really got to pull on this door to open it. And why? Well, this seemed to be there also. Why? Hmm. And there is this thing again. It's like, it's like something weird. But anyway, this one. Why? Why this one? Why? Why that? Let's see. Yeah, and he just put the thing on it, so put some protection on it. Why? That's the part I'm talking about. <sighs> why that? I'm trying to think of intent and why. An alignment? A lot rod? You to, to make sure you're sealed. You 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 have to. It pulls on that. It lines. An aligned an alignment indicator. That had it's really stiff. It doesn't look, look, look stiff, but maybe it is. And that's just some cheap uh, foam that they cut and slit and put over there. Hey, it's better than nothing. Okay, they removed it and then they closed it. Okay, and that's the that's the vessel. That's it in the uh, in the uh, garage somewhere. Somebody's parking garage. Hmm, this is interesting. So here's the carbon fiber hull. I'm sorry, I should let you guys find it too. That's under Ocean Gate again. Okay, so it's uh Oh boy. Um This is interesting. How thick is this? They're bragging about you're bragging about the five inches of carbon. They just started. The overlap looks as the overlap looks. What is this? The stainless steel, uh, uh, stainless steel tube for the uh, model of it. I always wondered how they were going to do that. And then was that TIG welded there? And you don't get the bond until you let this build all the way up to here and over. To lock in the uh, outer shell door when they put the door on. I hope they show that much. Right, so there it is rotating and feeding it. Um, okay. Ah, shit. It's a giant lathe. There's it on a roller. Giant lathe. And no way are they taking that off that fiberglass, that steel. get green down here it, they're, 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 it's, it's green let's go back that is not green and the overlap is very small there's the green transition let me tell you about critical shear zones well apparently there's some extra work done in that zone, and I talked about that. 
now I see it, and this overlap is, is uh, I mean, they're cutting it close. I mean, we're talking, I mean, look at it. That doesn't look like, if he gets the hell out of the way, I'd be able to see it, but that doesn't look like much of an overlap. Okay, so there's our critical shear zone being made. Something's being a deviation of, of the of the mid mid is the midsection um, is being done. Something different. I don't mean negative, but it's definitely different. And somebody thought it out to do that, and here we are. Okay. So looking over his shoulder, yeah, it's a it's a very small, very small overlap. I mean, I don't see any daylight through there in the green, but it's it's small. And then he turned directions. Okay. Okay, I'm thinking about the glue application of the carbon fiber, how it's being fed. And what do we have here in the middle, that line? Yeah. It's definitely a it's definitely a line. Alright? Definitely a line. Let's see if it disappears when he goes over to it. Yep, here he comes. It does not. Okay, what the hell is he going over? What the hell did he just go over? Is that a, is that is that a weld? From the maybe the 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 uh, that, that tube. There it is still. Oh, we got to look at that. We got to come back. So this is that green we saw in the beginning. There's the I guess holding it, making the lathe, the giant lathe, and this is that green primer glueish thing. Stepping down. Nope, 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 nope. That's not stepping down. It's uh, a lot. My eyeball. Okay, he's letting it spin to lay, to lay it. Okay, so we can't see it, but I don't see any green down here. So, now let's see if we see that line somewhere back here. I don't see any electronics put on here, any strain gauges put on there, so it's not, it's on the, it's not on the inside here. Okay, now they jumped. Okay, there. Oh, they're giving us a couple of video shots. Of, uh, the, the, the roll, the new rolls. Okay. We're coming up on that line yet? Fuck, we already missed it. So I said it had, did it have some type of connection like that? It's significant. I don't know how thick this is though. It's, it's more the carbon fiber doing the work. So that that's not doing the work. So how did they tie this carbon type fiber to the outer wall? Was it that hump? Remember that hump little thing that they go over? Maybe that's that's it. Okay. Speed it up. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Any comments? Back to the video. Any comments? OceanGate's okay. new approach to manned submersibles is based upon new lightweight materials. A carbon fiber hull. Existing off-the-shelf technologies. Commercial game controllers. Standard computers. And operational efficiency. One of the things we've done is automate a lot of the internal functions. It is a very simple vehicle to train someone to operate. Cyclops launch and retrieval system does not require a costly support vessel. If you look back at the earlier designs of deep diving submersibles, they weren't focused on market operations. All right, so I, I get where he was going with it. And Cyclops was actually the one who was a little more deeper. But it, for oil exploration, everything, commercial usage, okay. Okay, here's your collaboration with the Applied Physics of... of uh, the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington. So they're the ones that 
said this was a sound idea. Okay, so if we're going to throw people on the bus. Let's now throw in Applied Physics Labs, University of Washington. And I need to g come back to this. So it was all about budget, etc. And they have, they seem to be really the, the ones that the bus needs to roll over a bit. But he found the funding, the money, the people interested in funding it. But his expert was Applied Physics Labs, University of Washington. Keep that in mind now as we roll a bus over top of this, the, uh, as we call it, McClown Show. It looks like uh, he just had hatred for the wrong people, though. That you don't have to be a U.S. Navy submarine skipper to operate. Stockton is very interested in being able to quickly train pilots, have pilots be able to come in and use it. It's the Applied Physics Labs guy. Okay. This thing without having to go through weeks of training on there. Okay. Solution? This video game controller. Combination steering wheel and gas pedal, which is... See that? A APLU, right? APL. Applied Physics Lab, University of Washington, Principal Engineer, Peter Brodsky. Did you see him come forward in any of this and say, hey, it's not the controller, it's not that, it's not this. Here's your, here is your solution guy. Right there. All right, so now he may have been taking credit for it by, by, by talking about it and being proud of it as his marketing skills. But it's apparently, uh, not apparently, it's stated as the pride physics lad, this Pete Brodsky is the one that's, that's the, uh, the engineer. This device, this is a Sony PlayStation PS3 uh, gaming controller. And with this device, we can drive the submarine, make it go up, down, left, right, forward, and backwards. The main challenge probably was learning how this device communicates with a computer. APL's Pete Brodsky designed the Cyclops control system and the complex electronic paths from the controller to the submersible's thrusters. In a nutshell, the electrons from here have to make it through about 10 different channels of a computer out fiber optic into another device which turns it into an analog signal out to a motor drive which then generates uh, high power electrical signals out to the thrusters. Getting all that connectivity right was interesting and challenging. But we believe we have it down now. There's aspects of it that are groundbreaking. Um, David Dyer tackled the impact of hull design on efficient energy use, developing an evolution from earlier boxier ocean gauge submersibles. When you looked at the Cyclops shape, there was a lot of effort put into it to make it look neat and cool, but also to make it so that it was functionally hydrodynamically efficient. Efficient without compromising the pressure hull. We are now taking a pretty significant exoskeleton structure, having to attach it to the primary pressure hole. That's good. Come on in. I think we can push it over. You can't put holes in it. Um, we didn't want to weld to it. Uh, we had to do it in such a way that we didn't impact the functionality of that pressure hole. Um, so technically, that was a big challenge for us. With Cyclops nearing operational status, the next step is the marketplace. The basic pitch? Cyclops is going to be a very useful tool for any organization, company, or institution that needs to go underwater and perform tasks at depth um, without requiring a very expensive support ship and other apparatus that would be associated with a remotely operated vehicle. So, so he's the marketing guy to do to get it all done, and this is what he was uh, what he was doing there. Now, so Applied Physics Lab are the ones that, 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 that have their hand all over this. Cyclops is the newest creation of OceanGate, a for-profit private company in partnership with the University of Washington's Applied Physics Laboratory. In partnership with the University of Applied Physics We couldn't have done it without that partnership. You know. We couldn't have done it without them. Okay, I'm going to stop there. You guys can look at the rest of the video. Okay, guys, it looks like I found that seam that I kept. This is a virtual tour. These people aren't really moving in the background. He's just standing in front of a photograph. But look, there is that seam or presents as that seam that might go all the way through. That, that I saw them when he was putting the, fi the fiber on and go over. So it seemed like a significant weld. It stands proud inside and obviously proud outside. 
What does that do with that carbon fiber? It's five inches, and it's mirrored like that, right? What does that, and it's all the way around. Does that take a construction joint, a, cra, a, fra, a construction joint, a control joint? Uh, it's, it, it has its bends, right? It has its outer bend. Um, it has an inner bend, if you will. It has a peak, a curve, if you will, a concave, convex, concave, convex. Again, it's got its own little profile. It makes me wonder, maybe a, a clustering of of of, uh, of uh, fiber there that won't work, that clusters up. I wonder if therein lies our stress, our stress, our stress relief, our part that expands and contracts differently, because we have the pressure vessel. That, that part I'm calling pressure vessel, the tube they're in, flat, except for there. Except for in the there upon right there, I think that this location. All right, this is a long video, yes, and you could see this is a long video that you can comment on. Some people comment about, well, none of them are scientists; they're just people who have venture skills and um, money. So uh, this one you can look at. That was uh, it's 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 interesting, but I'm going to get to the one down to the right in a moment. One of the explorers okay. who was literally bringing new light Bank, to that saga, Bank of America. Stockton Rush, the president and chief submersible pilot at Ocean Gate Expeditions, will take you through the process of constructing the world's first carbon fiber, human-occupied submersible, All right, creating is, a successful deep-sea exploration company. That this is worth it. Let me just fast forward. This is worth it just to... Uh, you understand his shit, the, the mindset. This was eight eight months ago. Yeah, we'll see if this works. Okay. Oh, there we go. Um, I bring this up. You know, it, the Earth is really a water planet. I think we will probably all appreciate that. I think. But I also uh, was a space person, and so look, he's already, I've already heard this part. Is, is, is uh, you got to watch his videos. Let's get to the vessel. NASA has come out repeatedly now uh, talking about the fact that there are more aquatic, it's more liquid water, all about emotion. And the three quarters of the planet is water. Okay, I'll pick it up from here. This was our training sub. Uh, it had been a uh, tourist sub in the South Island of New Zealand. We use that to take everyone from uh, journalists to venture capitalists to lay people to Macklemore, you name it. We yeah. took them in the sub to try to figure out, okay, what is the business model here? We thought that there was this opportunity, there was this need for people to go in the ocean. There were researchers who wanted to go in the ocean. Robots, autonomous vehicles had their place, but there was a spot for humans to go down there, more so even than there's a reason for humans to go to space. And if you don't um, but that, what was the model there? And we thought, well, there are folks who crew. want to do high-end adventure tourism, people who were going, uh, spending $100,000 to climb Everest. Or Right, he took 110 initially, then he took it to a quarter million. But remember this, is that um, he got him and identified his crew on their, on their documentation, not not like tourists or anything else. So uh, they were they were crew. So that makes it a different thing with everybody talking about lawsuits. You got to realize they became crew. That's, that's uh, Shadow, uh, also known as Shelly, in the background. And this other noise you might hear, like a, like a grumbling sound, that's... Uh, gray cat uh, purring her heart out to go to Antarctica maybe we could merge the two so we got that and we dove all over the place we dove in oh, Alcatraz Island uh, Monterey Gulf of Mexico you name it we factory. went around and then in 2015 we launched the Cyclops project which generated the uh, minimum viable prototype on the lower left which I strongly recommend as would most folks uh, we just got it out there to figure out what we could do it can only go only to 1600 feet um, the Titanic is 12,500 feet deep, but it helped us uh, build out the business model, get awareness, work on our launch and recovery system, which we'll talk about a little bit. And ultimately, in 2017, we dove Titan, which is the, uh, the queen of the fleet. We have five subs. Uh, one goes to 1,000 feet, one goes to 1,600 feet, and Titan goes to 13,200 feet deep done a bunch of ex, uh, expeditions and learned that there, there are many challenges. There's the... Uh, Titan goes all the way to the bottom. 
technology challenge, there is the, um, there's a regulatory challenge, there are a bunch of things to do, but those expeditions have really helped us okay, practice for things go. like fixed seating, uh, and now we just have sort of an open bay. It's a very... Uh, okay, open look. But again, I want you to take note of that ring. Now, he's going to show explosion view of... Uh, a participatory video. activity. When and I don't mean in a negative way, it's a blown up view. Coming this up. So to do this, we had to uh, use... Titanium, Titan. All right, so there's that back dome, front dome, plastic shell. Um, nope, that son of a bitch is ringed. Uh, pressed. Is this Titan? I don't, I, this looks like Titan. Um, this looks like Titan, uh, you know, with the, with the head dome like that and the tail like that. So that's that dome in this section together. And so now we reveal that that was, that ship that it was, it was a Cyclops, but apparently the model, the, uh, the Titan and Cyclops have the same model. Hey, Shelly, look at this. Look at Shelly. She wants, she's coming over here wants some pets. I got to come here, girl. Come here. Anyway, so it looks like, the, yeah, that look, unit looks like they, that, that they need to bring this up and evaluate if this failed. And then that university possibly needs that nice little lawsuit action going on. Um, God, she needs petting. The ring. I see, I see the rings now. I don't like it. It's a lot of pressure. Could that glue hold on to those rings? Um, you remember I told you the pressure works all the way around. It sort of puts it in place. But little deflection. And off goes the game. Um, with that said, I'm still back in the middle. I'm still sticking to this section here is our, is our buckle section. A section that, 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 that buckled. Five inch walls. I'm just considering this the uh, Titan. So there's how they tight the Titan. We but we saw that this had like carbon fiber over top of it. So would they come later and add some? Like right right here. I did it in a video. And if they if that's so, it was it was that grip just, you know, so so? Not not it, apparently it was not five inches. Alright, these looks like this is five inches and this is that press shit. And glued, and I'm saying shit. That's my word. The uh, and then we have the issue of how do they connect that? Hmm. Now let me think of that. Still, a pressure would want to hold it together, but deflection would make it <sighs> deflection. This, no, I'm back to here. I'm back to this 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 section here. The 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 the, 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 the glue did. This fracture, this was so rigid, it fractured and tore off. Now, how much of it is stuck? Of oh, this is still to there. It would be nice to know, if any at all. Um, then that means you got a glue bond failure because they use glue. They said, "Let's go for it." Different material. Um, titanium is the common. There's some, some high strength uh, carbon steels that are used. I think the Russians use those, but uh, titanium uh, is. Um, Let's put it this way. Carbon fiber is three times better on a strength to buoyancy basis than titanium. And underwater, that's what you care about. It's not strength to weight, it's strength to buoyancy. And yet no one had done that. And there are uh, certifying or semi-certifying agencies, the uh, Pressure Vessels for Human Occupation Committee that uh, handles hyperbaric chambers and submarines. You have the SubSafe program in the, uh, in the Navy. These programs are uh, over the top in their rules and regulations, but they had nothing with carbon fiber. So we had to go out and, uh, and work on that. And one of the things I learned is, you know, when you're outside the box, it's really hard to tell how far outside the box you really are. Yeah, and he, I think he went outside the box of this version of sound instead of pressure. Just simply a pressure inducer, guys. Something that would tell him the true pressure of the outside there, not what's be, how this is behaving, because you just don't know how it's behaving. But pressure, saying that maybe this, this thing is, would read pressure um differently than than what than what he thinks you know some internal bars that went across from wall to wall and all of a sudden this thing starts uh um buckling a bit you're like oh shit you know i can't tell but this scale is reading 
you know, per our sensors, is reading that it's now taking on a pressure, a squeeze. So in that case, we need to stop and go back because we should not be being squeezed. We should not get experience any squeeze at all. Because squeeze would break our bond. We can't have squeeze. We can't have deflection. We are. Uh, and we were pretty far out there. So we have a, a carbon fiber hull, it's five inches thick, uh, and titanium uh, domes on the end. So let's just look at what he's got here um, before he mentions it. Um, it appears this is some testing, some shattering of it, or it's a trash can. Um, yeah. This is, no, it's very small scale. It's like, it looks in a damn a box or something in a garage. One of the things that uh, I think a lot of people appreciate is if you're not breaking things, you're not innovating. That's right. uh, if you're operating within a known environment, um, as most submersible manufacturers do, they don't break things. Uh, Woods Hole uh, does a lot of autonomous things. They have a whole wall of stuff they've broken. To me, the more stuff you've broken, the more innovative you've been. And this is a third scale model that we took to the chamber at the University of Washington and took it to destruction. Uh, and once you go over 6,000 PSI uh, in the Ocean Sciences Building, you can only do that at night. And then they get on the loudspeaker and they tell everybody to get out. And now I'm standing next to this chamber, and we blow this thing up. It's the loudest thing I've ever heard. It shook the whole building, blew out all the pressure sensors, which I had to rebuy for the university. Um, but it helps us validate an acoustic monitoring system. Because in the research, found out that with composites, what you really want is acoustic monitoring. Strain gauges don't tell you a lot, because they just tell you the deformation on the inner surface. When you're dealing with composites, uh, acoustics will pop and crackle, and it's almost like having an EKG. You can acoustics will pop and crackle. I think he meant that carbon fiber will pop and crackle. Tell how the hull is doing. And if we were going to stretch this new material in a new environment with people inside, we needed to know well before it failed that it failed. Our rule is we risk capital. We don't risk people. So if somebody comes to me and says, hey, here's a new idea for the, the sub. Okay. So he believed that that, 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 that sensor on a one-third scale extrapolated to the full, full, full per, per this so far, unless he says he scaled it. And, and that's amazing. He says he doesn't risk capital, doesn't matter. Then he shouldn't have used one-third scale. He should have used full scale under full pressure and go from there. So out of one part of his mouth, he says one thing, and out of the other part of the mouth, he tells he's worried about money, the one-third scale crap. This clearly could have been full scale pressured. Uh, if the, uh, the uh, end result of that failing is that we cancel a mission or we lose a little money, that's fine. If somebody gets hurt, then we go and find out a, a different approach. And with the acoustic monitoring system, we can tell if the hull has had some problem over time. Maybe uh, it was run into by a forklift and we didn't know it or dropped in its transport on its way to the East Coast. Um, because the pressure and temperature at 1,000 meters and 2,000 meters and 3,000 meters is always the same. And so if it's making noises at that depth that it didn't make on the last dive, then we can stop the dive, we can go up, we can find out what might. Okay, so that's, that's his, uh, sa at 1,000 meters, stop the dive. And, and so at 1,000 meters, you hear it making this noise you've never heard before, but that might be the, the last noise, the noise of death. So his system is not, is not good. It should have been based on deflection. And they did say he had strain gauges, but he doesn't talk about that here. Again, he had a one-third scale model. Nothing like the real model to tell you, to see the, the different behavior. You know, this is, uh, this is larger. One-third is one-third, and I don't know how they tested that, but it looks like they ripped the head of it off. I, I, it, it's by some wood there, so I don't see this great explosion taking place. Great leap when they pump air pressure internally and, and till the lid came off of it. I, I don't know how they did that testing. I wish you would share. It happened. Um, oh, we made is. one hull. Uh, I took it to 4,000 meters. Okay. 2020 hull layup. Okay, so there is that green stuff on it. Um, this, is, this is the one-third scale, I think. And... Uh, just looking at this thing. Mm hmm. 
It's not what it's not in the same place they were. They were more in a garage. It's a little different. Um, okay. So what happens if you you get a bond with the surface below and you and your outer surface starts moving? You you get a a a break in those two uh, a, a tension a tension problem where the internal skin is um, the issue. The surface tension, uh, not allowing it to deflect with it, move with it. I don't know what that green thing is. Um, uh, and it made a lot of noise, which is a very sphincter tightening experience. Um, okay, sphincter, we yeah. brought it back, and it wasn't getting quieter on the second dive. It should have been dramatically quieter. If you think about it, when you get to this uh, maximum pressure, it's a thing called the Kaiser effect. You get a lot of popping and crackling. And the next time you go to that pressure, you should have a lot less. All those weak fibers and voids have all been taken care of. And this hull wasn't doing it. So we scrapped it. We went back. We built another one. The first one we had done was with a uh, highly recommended uh, marine manufacturer. We went to aerospace quality. We use the same uh, pre-preg that's used on the 787 with our partners, and we couldn't have done any of this without partners. Uh, great partner in Electro Impact up in Everett. Great to be in this community where there is such a um, preponderance of expertise in titanium and carbon fiber and manufacturing and engineering. We did work with Janicke, Boeing, NASA. There's 667 layers of carbon fiber uh, in just a, what's called a 090 uh, axial and um, um, uh, rotational uh, layout, which is not normally done, but in the ocean, that's all you see. You don't get any torsional moments. We built this hull up. We um, were uh, tested it at the deep ocean test facility. He said you don't get any torsional moments, and that's what I talked about. Do you get a torsional moment when you go to release those weights? Does he turn the vessel? And when he does that, and I'm worried about did did that load on each side create a torsional moment on the ring? So it's interesting he says that, and that's one of the things I question. In Annapolis, Maryland, an amazing uh, facility, the only one on the planet where you can put something like that in a, for a test. And then in 2021, after having to cancel twice before, we were able to go out and dive on the Titanic. The challenges that we've run into in uh, regulatory transportation, we're shipping containers across country, across international boundaries during the pandemic. We got all of our mission specialists in with much difficulty uh, and we're able to do some dives, capture some amazing footage uh, and then went back this last year uh, and actually brought an 8K camera because we have this gigantic dome. You can see the mission specialists have their, their iPhones in there capturing great images. We get great. So he says that the... Uh he didn't like the the one scale model because it wouldn't give him feedback. It wouldn't give him crackling, crackling. But the but the other model did, and that's the one he liked. He liked the one that that was deflecting and flexing and speaking to him. That is beyond intuitive. It images on the outside, um, and one of the things I really liked was on the. Last dive of the last mission this year, we had one extra dive. So when we go out, we are out on, we're over the Titanic for five days. We have to do two dives to um, fulfill what we've told our uh, mission specialist clients uh, if they're going to get to the Titanic. We've got five days to do that. We were weathered out on every cycle. We only got the two dives that we needed to get. On the last day, the last dive, we had one extra one. And we dove on a, a target that was a sonar target from 25 years prior. Thought it might be a shipwreck. It turned out to be a subsea reef, uh, 10,000 feet underwater. And it had all these sponges and soft corals. Uh, you can see the two green dots there. Those are uh, 10 cents. I see something I've never seen before. And, uh, and on YouTube, we typically 10, 20,000 views is considered pretty good. Uh, you, this year, we, had, uh, we launched a, a video that got to a million views. At I'm going to get to almost you. nothing. Um, so I'm really excited to do that. And then thank you I'm again for, for having hours. me. Uh, but it's at 4,800 meters. And but what's the significance of the Bismarck? Well, the Bismarck is interesting. Like the Titanic, it died on its maiden voyage. Um, it was sunk by the British uh, and the Allies in uh, World War II. And so uh, it sank, and uh, the uh, Russian Mir subs went there um, the 30 half mile. Uh, For 110. Well, so much of that I was talking. All right, so 
he believed the noise was a positive thing. So how do you know when it's negative? At what point do you say, well, that's, oh, I kind of like that new noise. What point do you say, oh, that new noise doesn't make sense. Since you're always looking for a new noise, as he stays doing, going dive, how do you know when you get a bad noise? So apparently his system left interpretation to someone that's never, that's never been to scale, never these many dives with this vessel, and each dive was one time more. And this, those noise were saying that we're going to break up. We're not going to survive. And he didn't interpret the noise correctly per his saying that he can interpret noise and what he expects. So the noise indicator was ignored. Let's see if we can get him to, to talk about the noise. Um, well, that's not right. Stuff they've broken. Okay. To me, the more stuff you've broken, the more innovative you've been. And this is a third scale model that we took to the chamber at the University of Washington and took it to destruction. Uh, and once you go over 6,000 PSI uh, in the Ocean Sciences Building, you can only do that at night. And then they get on the loudspeaker and they tell everybody to get out. And now I'm standing next to this chamber and we blow this thing up. It's the loudest thing I've ever heard. It shook the whole building, blew out all the pressure sensors, which I had to rebuy for the university. Um, but it helps us validate an acoustic monitoring system because in okay. the research found out that with composites, what you really want is acoustic monitoring. Strain gauges don't tell you a lot because they just tell you the deformation on the inner surface. And you want that deformation knowledge. That means you're also got deformation on your rings, your connections. When you're dealing with composites, uh, acoustics will pop and crackle, and it's almost like having an EKG. You can tell. He's saying acoustics. See, I'm confused by that. He's saying acoustics. I think he meant the fiberglass. Listen. You a lot because they just tell you the deformation on the inner surface. When you're dealing with composites, uh, acoustics will pop and crackle, and it's almost like having an EKG. You can tell how the hull is doing. And if we were going to stretch this new material in a new environment with people inside, we needed to know well before it failed that it failed. Our rule is we risk capital. We don't risk people. So if and again, if that's true, then he would have did a full-scale model. Somebody comes to me and says, hey, here's a new idea for the, the sub. If the, uh, the uh, end result of that failing is that we cancel a mission or we lose a little money, that's fine. If somebody gets hurt, then we go and find out a, a different approach. And with the acoustic monitoring system, we can tell if the hull has had some problem over time. Maybe uh, it was run into by a forklift and we didn't know it. Or You want to come to this video. There's your title of it. And it's at 1018 in this video. Listen dropped in its transport on its way to the east coast um, because the pressure and temperature at a thousand meters and two thousand meters and three thousand meters is always the same and so if it's making noises at that depth that it didn't make on the last dive then we can stop the dive we can go up we can find out what might have happened so if it's different noise go back up certain depth how does he know that is your computer memorizing each one of the noises as he goes down is it mirroring do you see a graph on the computer screen, does it give an alert? Let's say you're now at 1,000 meet, 1,000 feet, and you look at a graph, and it's got the same noise, the same graph of all the of all the indicators, all the sensors on this. Does you, how do you know? Now, but listen. Um, we made one hull. Uh, I took it to 4,000 meters, um, uh, and it made a lot of noise, which is a very sphincter tightening experience. So. Spinkster meaning your pucker factor, your hiney hole, tightens up, clenches. All right, so this is the one model. Um, we brought it back, and it wasn't getting quieter on the second dive. It should have been dramatically quieter. If you think about it, when you get to this uh, maximum pressure, it's a thing called the Kaiser effect. You get a lot of popping and crackling. And the next time you go to that pressure, you should have a lot less. All those weak fibers and voids have all been taken care of. And this hole wasn't doing it. So we... It wasn't doing it. You've already damaged it, and then you take it to 4,000 again. He thinks it's, it should be uh, behave the same again. It's not. This is carbon fiber. It's, it's obviously you're taking it into a new thing, and you're telling me what, how it should behave instead of accepting how it's behaving. He determined the Kaiser effect says on carbon fiber, five inches, this cylinder shape, it must follow the Kaiser effect. Not true. This followed exactly the behavior that it followed. Let's go back and listen to that again. Experience. Um, we brought it back, and it wasn't getting quieter on the second dive. It should have been dramatically quieter. It wasn't getting quieter. 
was not getting quieter. So it was, it, 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 uh, it said, we're just breaking up. It was like breaking a, a wire, a hanger, back and forth. So there we go. Tells you that you didn't, you need more carbon fiber or more rigid or your ratios are wrong. Your wall thickness to length. Think about it is when you get to this uh, maximum pressure, it's a thing called the Kaiser effect. You get a lot of popping and crackling. And the next time you go to that pressure, you should have a lot less. All those weak fibers and voids have all been taken care of. And this hall wasn't doing it. So we scrapped it. We went back. We built another one. The first one we had done was with a uh, highly recommended uh, marine manufacturer. We went to aerospace quality. We use the same uh, prepreg that's used on the 787 with our partners, and we couldn't have done any of this without partners. Uh, great partner in Electro Impact up in Everett. Great to be in this community where there is such a um, preponderance of expertise in titanium and carbon fiber and manufacturing and engineering. We did work with Janicki, Boeing, NASA. There's 667 layers of carbon fiber uh, in just a, what's called a 090. Uh. All right, 090. Okay, just straight around. No, no, uh, no, 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 uh, no hatching, no hatching, Just straight around. So, um, the, uh, you'll get to that, but six, 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 seven, 667 layers. Axial and, um, um. Uh, a rotational uh, layout, which is not normally done, but in the ocean, that's all you see. You don't get any torsional moments. We built this hull up. We, um. Or uh, tested it, it. So no rotational, no torsional moments. To, I told you, but I brought that up in one of my videos, saying again, how about these weights? Are they creating a torsion in there? The weights on one side, um, is this thing balanced? Is it creating a torsional, uh, an axis in there? But then again, I saw that little bit of metal shell, so the metal shell might be able to balance that part of that torsion um, from there. Also, the door weight. He said, no torsional moments. Uh, I just talked about that. Do you keep the door, when you open it, do you keep the door fully supported? Because otherwise, when you open the door, that is a torsional moment on there. That hinge, right? The hinge wants to spin around. It doesn't want to just stay where it is. So the hinge on that door uh, is over here, as I show you. And there's the door. It's hinged here. Well... It's round, but there's a there's a torsional moment going on there from the door. That's why I said, do they keep it on a dolly when they open it to keep that from having any torsion inside that there? And exactly what I was mentioned is exactly what he's talking about, but he's putting it in the ocean and not when it's on land, the torsional moment is created with the door being open without being supported. 100% without being supported. It should be supported all the time, or you or you created a torsional moment when you when you have nothing to to, to counter that. <sighs> that would put it the way the door would really matter, and that would put that failure. Say this is the uh, this is the, the black tube, and here's the door, and maybe the rotational moment's in about a foot or so, and that's what I keep talking about with that. How much do they come in, and then the bond there. I know it's pretty pretty tough to follow some of this the way I present, but I hope you can follow what he's talking about. Torsional rotation. All right. The deep ocean test facility in Annapolis, Maryland, an amazing uh, facility, the only one on the planet where you can put something like that in a, for a test. And then in 2021, after having to cancel twice before, we tightening experience. Um, <laughs> We brought it back, and it wasn't getting quieter on the second dive. It should have been dramatically quieter. If you think about it, when you get to this uh, maximum. So they dropped it on the dive. Uh, he didn't say he was in it. Dropped it on the dive, and it made a lot of crackling. Dropped it on the dive again, and it made a lot more crackling. So instead of resolving it, they blamed the the uh, the person that, that, that laid this out and said, nope, we're going somewhere else. We'll go to another person pressure is a thing called the kaiser effect you get a lot of popping and crackling and the next time you go to that pressure you should have a lot less all those weak fibers and voids have all been taken care of and this hall wasn't doing it so we scrapped it we went back we built another one the first one we had done was with a uh, highly recommended uh, marine manufacturer we went to aerospace quality we use the same uh, prepreg that's used on the 787 with our partners and we couldn't have done any of this without partners uh so what do you think that uh this is the Kaiser effect. What do you think the Kaiser effect 
and um, CTS building have in common? Well, that's basically what they do when they do the sounding to look for the same interpretation. It's It's got a lot of interpretation to it when you're doing sounding in concrete. And this is his version of saying, hey, I can use it here in this uh, carbon fiber. If we hear any creaking, we know we're out of range. But the problem is, um, again, you need to see repeatability. And the moment you don't see it, do you say, let's run, cut bait and run, or do you make up an excuse? You know, oh, maybe that sounds like that because you weigh an extra 50 pounds. And last time I was down here, we had a total combined weight of 900 pounds. You're acting like a dampener because you weigh more in the sub. You know, maybe you start giving up excuses for you being a, your weight being a dampener. Or maybe, maybe that's part of the engine cycling. Or let me turn down the radio because you blast the radio in there. So let me turn down the radio and maybe that vibration sound changes. I have a real problem with the sensors. I thought they, they were a terrible idea. Uh, maybe to learn from, but you want to also have a always have a some type of uh, pressure sensor that can tell you true pressure, and then also tell you true deflection in your carbon fiber, and that would be something have to be an if sacrificial that would that would break, and once it breaks, you get you know all lights off and an automatic return home back up. Doop doop, things just automatically happen. It takes it out of your control to fix it, to, uh, to, to override it. All right, so there's your Kaiser effect that he depended on. It caused the, um, that, that he might have heard the sounds and ignored them. Um, and then when, um, because he thinks that when you go there again, it should be a different sound. I'm, 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 that he wanted to hear different, uh, that he, should, uh, that he didn't like the idea of his one model making different sounds the second time down, so he went to somewhere else where it did not make the same sounds. Instead of resolving why you do that, he went to a different model altogether to try to get stability, but it was in full scale. So, so let's be clear about that. He said he did one-third scale, one-third of five inches, all right? He did... Ah, shit. Here we go. One-third scale. So it's one-third of five inches is what he did his did his model on. Height, length, distance, sizing. That's a whole... It does, it does, it's not necessarily going to behave the same. All right? I just can't... It's it's not going to behave... Well, this, this one resulted in death. I'm hanging up the video. Take care. Bye.